Absolute maxima and absolute minima. By definition, an absolute maximum value on a graph is the point that is highest on the graph, the largest f of x value. Similarly, the absolute minimum is the lowest, the smallest. Looking at a picture here, the absolute minima exists at the bottom of a parabola. The absolute maximum is the point all the way to the top right, which is 2, 2. Looking at this picture, you have two absolute maxima. That's very possible. And your absolute minimum exists all the way on the bottom right. All right, so the process here is actually pretty convenient, especially if you understood what we did the last couple sections. Step number one is you take f of x and find the critical points. That means you take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and find all the zeros. Step number two is you plug in any critical points to the original equation. You also plug in the endpoints to the original equation and see what value you get. Step three is the largest number that you get is going to be your absolute maximum. The smallest number that you get is your absolute minimum, and anything that falls in between means absolutely nothing. So let's take a look at a few examples. So what I have to do in this first problem is I have to find the absolute maximum of, or, and the absolute minimum of that function right there. And I only care about what my graph looks like in between negative four and four. So to put it in a little bit of perspective, um, I have an equation that when graphed is going to look something like this, something like that. And I only care about what happens in between here and here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative. Okay, set the derivative equal to zero. And that gets me my critical points. Okay, so that's step number one is to find my critical points. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, add one divide by two. So finally, we have a nice critical point, or at least we don't have to do all this crazy factoring like we have in the past. Uh, now, so that's my critical point, my one and only critical point. Now what I do is I take that critical point, this guy right here, I take my end point, that guy right there, and that guy right there, and I plug it into the original function. Okay, if my job is to find out the largest and the smallest values of the original function, I'm taking the critical point, which gives me a maximum or a minimum, a relative one, and I take these endpoints, which could be the absolute ones, I never know. I mean, it looks like from here that my minimum is definitely going to live right at a half, give or take. And it looks like by my picture, probably the absolute maximum is going to live at negative four, but I also want those values. So I take my critical point, I take my endpoints and I plug them into the original function to find out which is biggest, which one is smallest. So let's start out with the critical point. f of 1 half equals 1 half squared minus 1 half minus 6. Okay, uh, 1 half squared is a quarter. Minus a half is minus a half. Minus 6 is minus 6. Okay, a quarter minus a half is negative a quarter. Minus 6 is negative 6 and a quarter. Fun. Now I have to plug in these guys. So I'll plug in negative 4 first. F of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 squared minus negative 4 minus 6. Negative 4 squared is 16. Minus a negative 4 is positive 4. Minus 6. 20 minus 6 is 14. 
So when I plugged in a half, I got negative uh, six and a quarter. So this point right here, that point right there is one half six and a quarter. When I plugged in negative four, that point right there is negative four, 14. Now I want to find out what that point right there is, my other endpoint. okay? So let's plug in positive four. Four squared minus four minus six. Four squared is 16, minus regular four is gonna be 12, minus six is gonna be six. So when I do all of this stuff, I get three points. I get one half negative six and a quarter. I get negative four, 14, and I get four, six. Now of all of these points, these three points, the smallest value that I got was negative six and a quarter, which makes that my absolute minimum. When, so, and we saw that from the graph. One half, negative 6.4, that's what my graph looks like, then the bottom of the valley is definitely gonna be the minimum. And in this case, there's nothing relative about it. If I'm closing this off and if I'm saying, I only care about what the graph looks like from here to here, then my absolute minimum is gonna happen right there at one half. And it looks like right here is my absolute maximum. So negative four, 14 is my absolute maximum. It's the biggest value on the entire graph. And that guy is nothing, neither of them. But we had to plug it in just in case, okay? So again, the process was find the critical points, take the endpoints, plug it into the original equation. Smallest value is absolute minimum. Biggest value is absolute maximum. And if it's neither, it's neither. Let's do it again. Uh, find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum of this guy. Again, the process is to find the critical points. In this case, it probably will be more than one. And the endpoints. Plug them into the original. Biggest is absolute maximum. Smallest is absolute minimum. So take the derivative. That gives us 3x squared minus 6x. Set it equal to zero. And it looks like in this case, I could factor out a 3x. When I factor out a 3x, I have x minus 2. Okay? Factor 8. Factor. Take each part now, because I have zero product property. I have two factors. Take each part, set it equal to 0. 3x equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. Divide by 3 on the left. So one critical point is 0. Add two on the right, so the other critical point is two. So those are my critical points. So I have two critical points. I have zero, two, and I have two endpoints, zero and six. Oh look, zero's used twice. Should I plug them both in twice? No, that would be stupid. So let's plug in uh, the three points that I need to plug in, zero, two, and six. So F of zero, remember I'm plugging this into the original equation f of zero is going to be zero cubed, let me get my calculator out, times three times zero squared plus one. Zero, zero, one, one. It's like I was talking in binary there. <laughs> binary code. Oh boy, f of, <laughs> f of two. Now, I already plugged in zero. I should have probably put a check mark there. Now I'm gonna plug in two. 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared plus 1. 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Check. Let's try 6 f of six 
is going to be six cubed minus three times six squared plus one. If it sounds like I'm typing, I'm not typing. I'm about to sneeze. Hold on. Uh, and of course, while I'm doing that, let me rack my brain. Six to the third power is of course 216. A two. Minus three times uh, six squared. If it sounds like I am typing, I am not. I am just getting ready to sneeze again. A two. I can handle that one. 216 minus 108 is 108. 108 plus one is 109. All right, well, I think it's a little obvious what we have here. When I plugged in zero, I got one. That's the point zero one. When I plugged in two, I got negative three. That's the point two, negative three. When I plugged in six, I got 109. That's the point six, 109. The largest value of all of these is 609. That's my absolute maximum. Zero one is my absolute minimum. And that's a relative extrema of some kind. If I wanted to really find out, I can go back to what we did in the previous days and found increasing and decreasing intervals, but I'm not about to do that. All you people want is more, 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 more. Well, we're gonna keep going. So same exact directions, finding the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum of this guy right here. Before you start screaming, if you think you're gonna have to foil three times, nope. Do we not remember a little thing called chain rule, boys and girls? I have stuff to the third power, okay? Take the derivative of the outside, which means we, which means we bring three down and square it. Keep the inside and multiply everything by the derivative of the inside. Remember, remember, remember? Set it equal to zero. God is good, it's already factored out. That one's useless. I take each part, because I have a factor of three and I have two factors of x minus two, but I only care about the one, no big deal because um, it's gonna get the same answer anyway. Uh, I should have put three equals zero, not x equals zero, which does nothing for us anyway. Three equals zero means I'm not gonna have an x value to worry about, so that's nice. I have two x minus twos, which means I'm gonna have the same answer either way, which is two. So I have really difficult critical points. I have two and two, and even more difficult endpoints one and three. So I'm gonna plug in one, two, and three. It's as easy as a, wait, got that backwards. Plug it into the original equation. I'm gonna go in number, number alphabetical number order. F of one is going to be one minus two cubed. One minus two is negative one, negative one cubed is negative one. Plug in two. Two minus two cubed is gonna be nothing. Plug in three. Three minus two cubed is gonna be one cubed, which is gonna be one. So here we are, we have three points. I have a one, negative one. I have a two, zero and I have a three, one. My smallest value is that guy right there. My largest value is that guy right there. Fun, easy. Thank <laughs> you.